Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Seches Shkalim DAF Yud Ches contains one Mishnah and concludes the sixth Perek of the Mesechta. From the beginning of the DAF until the first Mishnah discusses a description of the Heichal, the building of the Mesa Migdash, and how the Kedem were situated within it. The Mishnah teaches us the halachas of the 13 boxes, the 13 collection chests which were placed in the base of Migdash, and discusses what each one was for, and a couple of halachas about taking the money from those chests and applying them to their designated uses. So first of all, the Gemara is describing the Heichel. The Heichel was, again, the building of the base of Migdash. In order to get into it, one walked through the Ulam, which was like an anteroom. And then the Gemara, and, and then one entered the Heichel. Now one entered from the eastern side, and when one went through the door, one was standing in a long room stretching 40 amas in front of him, and the 10 amas on either side wide, it was 20 amas wide and 40 amas long, and at the end um, of the 40 amas in front of him, there was the parochis, which beyond that was the Kodesh HaKadoshim, which was another 20 amas, so the entire building itself was 60 amas. Now, the Gemara says that in the northern part of the Heichel was the Shulchan, in the southern part of the Heichel was the Menorah. Those two were exactly across from each other. And they were both in the western half of the building, the room of the Heichel, the 40 amma room that you walk into right in front of, as soon as you walk into the Heichel, before not counting the Kodesh HaKadoshim itself, just the Kodesh. And so this, the inner half, the inner 20 amma half of that 40 amma room, the Shulchan was in the northern part, and the Menorah was in the southern part. And they were both pulled away from the wall by two and a half amas to allow people to walk and approach that those kalim and do the service on them as they were needed. Now, the Mizbeach was situated directly in the center of the room, so that when you entered, it was directly in front of you. This is the Mizbeach HaZav, the Mizbeach HaKetoros. It was also directly in front of the Paroches. It was... However, just over the midpoint, as far as the length of the room, meaning it was just past the 20 amma mark, it was further um, than, so it was just within the inner half of the 40 amma room. Now, it wasn't between the shulchan and the menorah, because the shulchan and the menorah have to see each other. They have to be neichach, as the Pesach says, they have to be across from each other. They can't block, can't have the mizbech blocking the uh, line of sight from one to the other. So therefore, it wasn't between them. It was pulled a little more towards the entrance door, um, but it was in that half of the room. Now, altogether, it came out that all three kalim were in the deeper half of the room, the 20 amas closer to the Kodesh HaKadoshim. Now the Gemara quotes the Pesukim describing the menorah, uh, and this, very mu- this discussion will very much parallel what we've said in the end of the last half as far as the Shulchan. So the Pesukim say that Shlomo HaMelech made 10 menorahs. He made 10 menorahs besides the menorah of Moshe Rab- Rabbeinu. He made 10 menorahs, and he put them in the Heichel, five on the left and five on the right. The Gemara asks, five left and five on the right, you mean five on the left of the door and five on the right of the door? That means five on the north wall, five on the south wall. Can't be. You have to all be on the south. The Gemara says, no, five on the, they were all on the south wall, five on the left of Moshe Ben menorah, and five on the right of Moshe Ben menorah. However, you only lit the middle one, according to one opinion. Go into the other opinion, which is Rebbeisi. Rebbe Huda, he lit all 11 of them. Okay, Pasuk then goes further, describing what Shalom Melch made. It says he made the special kalim for the menorah, he made the flower, he made the lamps, he made the cups, he made the tongs, he made all these out of Zahav Sagur, he made it out of closed gold. Closed gold means that the gold was so pure and so beautiful that all other shops would close up if these golds, if these, if this gold would be offered for sale. Now, the Gemara describes how it was made. The Gemara says he took a large piece of gold that was a thousand talents, a thousand kikar. He put it in the crucible to refine it, and he put it in again and again until it was refined so many times that the size shrunk to be just one kikar. went down from a thousand to just one. So Gemara uh, has a little bit of trouble with that because uh, we have a brysa. says Rabbi Yasi, Rabbi Huda says that the menorah of the Beis HaMikdash was one dinar zav, one small amount of gold larger than the menorah of Moshe, meaning the ones that were made by Shlomo were one dinar zav larger than the one of 
Moshe, and they put it in the fire, they put it in the crucible in order to refine it and shrink the size to be the same, they put it in 80 times and it didn't go down in size at all. So how could you tell me that he put it down so much and it went down from 1,000 to 1 if it won't even go down 1 in Dina is of? Sometimes it's not really a problem. Once it's pure gold, it can't go down any further. So therefore you put it in the fire as many times as you want. It's not going to lose that last Dina is of. However, when you're burning off dross, which is other material, then it continues to go down uh, further and further, and that's what Shalom HaMelech was able to do with the gold itself. But now we get the next Mishnah, which is the 13 collection chests that were in the base of Mikdash. And the Gemara, the Mishnah says that there were 13, and describes that they were 4, and what each one was labeled. So the first one said on it, Tiklin Chadatin, which means new Shkalem, this is for the Shkalem that are brought for this year. The next one said Tiklin Atikin, old Shkalem, those are last year's Shkalem that somebody forgot to bring. He brings them this year, and they go to the fund for uh, upkeep of Yerushalayim and the towers and the walls of the city and all those things that you use leftover shkalim from last year, or even leftover shkalim from this year, because they end up in the same fund altogether. Now, the next box said on it, Kinim, that was for bird carbonos. The next one said, Gozle Ola, that is for bird carbon Ola. The Mishnah and the Gemara will discuss what the difference between those two boxes are as soon as it gets through this list. But in the next box said on an Eitzim, that was for somebody who wanted to give wood. The next box said Levona, for somebody who wanted to give spices that went on the uh, Lachem upon him. And the last one was called Zahav, and possibly Zahav Likforos or Zahav Likaporos, depending on your Girsa. It could be uh, the gold that was used to make all the Kalim, the vessels of the base of Magnesh, or it could refer just to the upkeep of the Batek Abayas, as somewhat of a Machlokas between the Mepharshim had to understand this. Now, um, those were the first seven boxes. There were six other ones that um, they were just for donations. Anybody wanted to give carbonos, optional, voluntary carbonos, would put the money in one of those other six boxes. They all they just said nidava on them. They are for extra voluntary carbonos. Okay, the Mishnah continues and explains each of these. And the Mishnah quotes a machlok is, what are the two bird boxes for? Once it Kenan, once it goes the Ola. So the Gemara brings, so the Mishnah brings two opinions. Rabbi Huda says, Kenim are for older birds, Tyrin, and goes the Ola are for younger birds. They're both the same type of birds. They're both the same type of carbonos. It can be brought from older, from older birds or younger birds. That's birds more than a certain age, more than when the feathers on the neck turn gold or younger than that. But they were the, they had separate collection boxes for the two types of birds. But these are all for voluntary bird kabbana. Somebody wants to bring a carbon OS Nidava, he puts it in there. According to Abihudu, there was no collection box for for obligatory carbon, as somebody had to bring a carbon chatos or carbon ola, there was no collection box for that. He had to take the money straight to the Kohen and get the birds that way. Now, the Chachamim disagree. The Chachamim say, no, the bird that said on in Kinim was for the obligatory ones. The bird that said on in Golzi Ola, that was for the optional Olos Nidava. The only type of carbon that is optional is in Ola, at least as far as birds go. There is no optional chatos. And Gemara will explain what the Machlechus is seems to be focused on the topic of whether or not you could have a box for op- for obligatory carbonos, carbonos chova, the Gemara will discuss what their machlok is on that subject is. Okay, now, in order to explain the rest of the boxes, the Mishnah continues and it gives the minimum size of somebody who who vows to give a certain amount of material, but he doesn't specify how much. So, if someone says, Hare Eli Eitzim, I want to give woods, so he has to give at least multiple, at least two chunks of wood, Ingmar will describe how these chunks of wood looked and what their sizes were. Next, if somebody says he wants to give a levona, wants to give spices, then he has to give a komet. Komet is a scoop that a person takes by folding his three middle fingers against the palm. That is in uh, dry measure materials, in powdered materials, that's always the amount that's used to measure it for levona, for carbonos mincha. For all these things, that is the measured amount. Now, if somebody says he wants to give gold, then he has to give a dinar zav. That's considered to be the minimum amount that he could have possibly meant when he says he wants to give gold. Now, next, the mission says that there are six boxes for donations. The Gemara says what donations went in there. The Gemara says it was for a carbon ola, and the carbon ola went 
the meat went fully on the Mizbech, burned Lashem, and the skin went all the way to Kahanim. How do we know that? So Gemara says, as a drasha made by none other than Yehoyada, Kohen Agadol, who was the Kohen Agadol at the time of the King Yoash, who was also the Rebbe of the King Yoash, who saved him. And he learned it out of a contradiction between two psukim. One said, Asham hu, Asham, Asham, Lashem. He uses the word Asham three times, one referring to a carbon Asham, one that's the Asham Hu. And the other one is Ashoim Asham is a carbon Chatas. And it says that it's Lashem. Well, there's a different Pasuk, the Mishnah doesn't quote which one, but the Mepharshim say it's Kachatas ka Asham Torah Achaz Yel Lahem HaKoyin Sheikhaper Bo Lo Yihyeh. There's a different Pasuk that says that, it goes to the, that the Asham and the Chatas go to the Kohen. So how how is this? Does it go to the Hashem, like the first Pasuk says, or does it go to the Kohen, like the second Pasuk says? So Yehoyada said, the answer is like this. Any carbon chatas or Hashem, which is not brought, either because it's extra, or money which is left over, or if the owner can't bring it for some reason, the money, the value of the carbonas that are left over, end up going to be an Ola. And what happens to an Ola is that it's split between Hashem and and the Kohanim, the, all the meat are burned in the Mizbech, that's the part that's called Lashem, and the skin goes to the Kohen, and that's how we satisfy this mm, Pasuk. Now, just, the Mishnah adds, how do you know that Yehoyada is the one who said this drasha? The Mark quotes a Pasuk in Malachim, discussing what, Ye, what Yehoyada HaKohen had done. It says, Kesef Ashem, Kesef Chatos, La Yuva Beis Hashem, La Kohanim Yiyu. And he took the money of the Ashem, and the money of the Chatos, and he gave it to Kohanim. That means, that he uh, figured out this split between the value of the carbonos and the value between the value between the money from the carbon ola, the value of the hides that went to the kohanim, and the meat which went on the mizbeach. Okay, the Gemara now begins, and the Gemara says that we had seen in the Mishnah's Machok is being Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim whether or not he could have a box to collect money for people to bring obligated carbonos of birds, carbonos chova. Now these bird carbonos were. Uh, usually brought by women, that could be a Zava who has to bring a carbon, or it could be a uh, Yoledes, a woman who gives birth, has to bring two carbonos of birds. Now, the system that we assume would happen would be that they would bring the birds, put it in the box, and the uh, Kohanim would take the money out, use it to buy some of the birds that the base and make their head in storage and bring the carbon by the end of the day. It's very important because the women needed it to be able to eat kachim or to be able to eat uh, truma. It's part of their tahara process. So Gemara says, what is the machakas between Rabbi Huda and the Chachamim? Why does Rabbi Huda hold that there was no such boxes? Gemara says, Rabbi Huda had the following concern. Maybe one of the women will put the money in the box and she will die before her carbon is brought. What ends up happening then is that there's money here that is designated for a chatas that can't be brought. That money is usher. That money, those, if there is a bird set aside for that, it has to be left to die. And the money can't be used. So the problem will be that that money will not be mixed with the other money. You won't know which one it is. You're going to have to leave all the money aside. It's going to puzzle up all the money. You won't be able to bring kabbatas for anyone. The women already went home and they'll think they're allowed to eat to catch him tonight. It'll be a terrible situation. Therefore, you didn't have such boxes. The women had to bring their money straight to the Kohen, and he would buy a bird with that, and he would know where she is and what the story is with her, so that it wouldn't get confused and wind up in a situation like this. So now, the Gemara quotes a price, however, that says that there was such a system in place, and they did put money in the box, and they were able to go to the mikvah that day and eat that evening. And there was no problem, and there was no concern that some, that she may have died, and you have a leftover chatas money in there. So Gemara says, there's no concern, means there's no concern generally. However, Rabbi Yehuda was choshesh, meaning generally if you don't know that a woman had died, then there's no concern. You don't have to assume maybe somebody died. However, if somebody did die, we will have a concern, and we will have a problem, and we will not say, oh, well, we just assume that the money isn't in there. If we find out that somebody died, we're going to have a problem. We're going to have to take care of the money there and it'll be an issue. Therefore, women weren't supposed to put, or anybody who's bringing buried carbonus weren't supposed to put it in collection boxes because you could have a problem. However, this price is referring to where somebody did come and he did or she did put money in the collection box, which was not supposed to be for uh, carbonus chov, it was supposed to be for voluntary. But if that did happen, and as long as you don't know for a fact that she died, then you can assume that it's okay and that's what the price was referring to. 
Uh, however, Mida still agrees that if you will know that she dies, you will have a problem, and therefore we don't allow the system to happen. It's not how it's supposed to be. Now the Gemara asks, what's the problem? Why don't you just take the value of the birds, four zuz, out of the box and throw it into the other mouth? Destroy an equivalent amount. Why does it have to be those exact coins? So Gemara says, because the only way to get out of it being those exact coins is to say the concept of Brera. To say that whichever coins you take out, the concept of Brera will say that that is really the coins that is going to buy the carbon for her. I mean, we don't know which coins are going to buy the carbon for each specific person. So say, we'll take it for coins and we'll say, okay, these were the coins that were going to be for her, and we're throwing them out. But Rebuta doesn't hold a Brera, and therefore that solution wouldn't work. Referring back to the Mishnah, we had seen in the Mishnah that somebody could give wood. And if he wanted to donate a uh, supply of funds to buy the wood, if he said, I'm giving woods, eitzim, which is the standard word to use, then he would have to give two chunks of wood. And the Gemara says, is it possible for a person to donate just one chunk? If he says, Harel, I eats, not the standard way of speaking, but does that qualify as owing one chunk of wood? So the Gemara says, yes, each wood is a separate carbon. We could prove that. From a Mishnah Mesochas Yoma that discusses Kohanim and it says, Shnayim Beodam Shnei Gizri Eitim, or two Kohanim, each one holding a piece of wood. And they were going to bring it up to the Mizbeach that seems to indicate that each one is a separate carbon, it's a separate thing that's brought. Each piece of wood is considered to be a separate item brought to the Mizbeach, it's not all part of one big bringing. Okay. The Gemara brings a Pasuk for that. The Gemara says, It says, Venevish Kisak of Karban Minchal Hashem. And the word carbon is extra. Why does it have to say carbon min chalashem? It should be v'nefesh ki sakar min chalashem. I'll know that it's a carbon. So the extra word carbon is to show that the wood is also considered to be a type of carbon, something you're bringing to Hashem on the Mizbeach, and that each piece of wood is its own carbon. Now the Gemara says it was a standard size for these pieces of wood that were used to feed the fire on the Mizbeach. The Gemara says the standard size was an amba by an amma, but um, this is an amma of the thickness by an amma length. But the amma length was a chopped amma, it was a short amma of only five tochem. The amma width was a uh, longer amma of six tochem with the fingers spread loosely. That's one opinion. The other opinion is Ami who says that it was actually thin. The thickness of it was pretty thin. It was like the stick that holds uh, scales. When you have b- a balanced scale, the stick that holds the two at the top of the fulcrum, that is the thickness of the piece of wood. Now the Gemara says, why was it an Amma by an Amma? What's the significance of an Amma? The Gemara says, it comes from the Mizbeach of Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu's Mizbeach, the top of it was five Amas by five Amas. And that gave rise to a fire which was only an Amma by an Amma. The Gemara quotes a Barsa which discusses it. And it describes the Mizbeach from the bottom up. So it says, the bottom of the Mizbeach built by Moshe Rabbeinu in the times of the Mishkan, the bottom, there was a foundation, it was one Amma uh, tall, and that was that stuck out from the Mizbech itself, it was a ledge that stuck out by one Amma. Now there was a Soivev, there was a ledge that ran across, that ran around the Mizbech at its middle, that was also one Amma tall. It was a Karkoiv, that was a walking path at the top of the Mizbech, that was an Amma wide path going all the way around the fire. And besides that, there were corners that stuck up on the surface of the Mizbech, like horns. Each of those was an Amma by an Amma. So if you calculate it, um, in concentric squares, the Mizbech itself was a 5 Amma by 5 Amma square. The first Amma on each side was used up for the uh, space where these corners were. That leaves 3 Ammas by 3 Ammas, taking off an Amma on all sides. Of those three Amas, one Amma was the walking path going all the way around. That takes off an Amma on all sides. It leaves you with just one square Amma in the center, and that is what the fire was. Because that was the size of the fire, that was the size of the wood. And although the Mizbech in the base of Mikdash is much larger, the size of the wood stays the same. Okay, next, the Mishnah said that there's a Levona, the spices on the Lechem him. So uh, the minimum size, if somebody says he wants to give spices, is a comet, a three-finger scoop. So where's the way to get that from? Where it says that there's a link between the uh, lavona, the spices on the lechem apanim, and the carbon mincha, the flour and the carbon mincha. They both use the word azkara. You take an azkara, and that shows just like the scoop in a uh, carbon mincha was a comet, a scoop in the lavona, the minimum amount, the size was also a comet specifically. So Gemara says, well, if that's true, then you should learn another halach as well. Just like the Lavona on the 
lechem panim was two kimatzim because there were two stacks of lechem panim. You should also have two kimatzim in the carbon mincha. Everything should be a minimum of two. The Gemara says no. If you look in the lechem panim, you can see clearly that each one is considered to be a separate surface. Each one is its own carbon. How do you see that? Because each one has to have a minimum size of a kumatz. If one of them is missing a tiny bit, even if the other has extra, so that between the two of them they have the full amount of two kumatzim. Still, it's possible. Each one has to be its full comets in and of itself. That means that each one is its own carbon, each one is its own minimum size. So when you're going to learn from there to a carbon mincha, it only has to be one comets, because a comets is already a significant minimum size carbon. It's something significant that's being brought. Now, the Gemara says, based on this, Rabbi Yaisu wants to say, you could learn that you also have to use the comets of the fingers of the Kohen Gadol on duty at the time, because he's the one who would do the comets for the Lavona. So, uh, it should be his scoop, should be the standard one. After all, we're learning from there to all the other types of comets that are done. So, Gemara says, not necessarily, Rabbi Chizgi B'Shem Rabbi Yermi disagrees. He says, no, it could be just the comets of the person who's bringing it. It doesn't have to be uh, the one that's of the Kohen that's on a duty at the time. Okay, next, the mission said if somebody brings gold, it has to be a dinar or zav, a gold dinar. Most it's only if he says he wants to bring a gold coin. If he just says he wants to bring gold without specifying a coin, he could bring the size of the smallest kli in the Mesa Mingdash, which was the type of little fork. Okay, next, the mission said that there were six boxes that were just for general donations. These were where people would put money where they want to uh, give a carbon ola. The, or funds towards Karbonos Ola, and they would put the money in these six boxes, and the Kahanam would use it to buy Karbonos Ola when the Mizbeach had free time. So Gemara says, why were there six boxes? It gives a few explanations. First of all, Chizkiah says because there were six families of Kahanim. One served each of the six days of the week besides for Shabbos. Again, remember there was a sh- there were 24 shifts of Kahanim, but each shift was broken up into six families. And so in order to prevent squabbling between the six families, each one had their own collection box. Bar Padaya said it was for the six types of animals that a person could bring as a carbon ola, and each box was for a different type of animal. The six types of animals are an ox, a calf, an adult goat, an adult sheep, and a baby goat and a baby sheep. Now, Shmuel gives another shot. He says because there are six types of carbonos that their extra materials could be used to buy carbon ola. Their extra funds, if there was left over, could be used to buy carbonos ola, voluntary carbonos ola. And one box was for each of these types of carbonos. What were they? So one was for birds of Zavim and Zavos. One was for birds of a Yoledes, a woman who gave birth. One was for Chatas. One was for Asham. And one was for Mincha. And one was for the Asira Seifa, the special carbon Mincha brought by the Kain Agadol. Any leftover from these funds went to Olos, and therefore there was a separate box for each of them. Rabbi Yechon says, no, no, there weren't any need for six boxes. Dafko, we just needed a lot of, we just needed to have a lot of boxes because it was a lot of money that went into them and if you have too much money if you have one big b- box that gets filled up with so much what's in the bottom is going to stay there for a long time you're never going to reach it and it's going to end up rotting getting spoiled rusty moldy and you don't want that to happen now the Mishnah had mentioned the special drasha of Yehoyada Cohen, who uh, gave the drasha about the uh, carbon ola and how a part of it goes to Kahanim the Skin goes to Kahanim. Skumara notes that Yehoyada had set up boxes in the Beis Migdash. The Beis Migdash was in a disrepair because Yerushalayim was ruled by the wicked queen Atalia for a while. In order to repair it, a collection box was set up to collect funds. Yehoyada was involved in that. Sigmar says some discussions about those boxes that he set up, box or boxes, and the Machlokah says how many boxes were there? Shmuel bar Ranachman says in the name of there were two boxes that he set up. Um, so the Gemara says that Rabbi Shmuel, Tanad Bey, Rabbi Shmuel disagrees and says it was only one box. How do you know? Because the Pasuk says, Vayomer HaMelech, that the king ordered, it was King Yoash ordered, Vayasu Aren Echad, they made one box. Gemara says, what do you mean? That can't be, because the Pasuk says, what did they do with the box? It says they put it in the Hechel, and they made a hole in the lid. And then there's a different Pasuk says that they put it outside the Hechel. In the gate. So you see there were two, one inside and one outside. Gemara says, no, not necessarily. It could be the same one. It started off inside, and then the king said, move it outside, because the people that are Tameh want to give money into the box, and they can't, because they're Tameh, they can't go inside the Heichel. Therefore, they moved the box outside so the Tameh people could have access to it. Gemara makes another proof, though, that there were two boxes, because the Pasuk in Malachim describes that the money was used to 
fix up the base of Migdash and not to buy any Klisharis. But the Pasuk in Derei Yamim says that it was used to buy Klisharis. So it must be that there are two separate boxes. One was used for Klisharis and one was used for fixing the base of Migdash. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.